Good evening. Hello, hello, hello. What is going on? Hi, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Wednesday. I am going to be reading comments from my phone because uh, I don't want to have to lean forward to try to read because <laughs> my back is a little cranky today. A little cranky. So that's what's happening there. Uh, let's see. Hello, Evelyn Newman, Auntie Anne. Hello, the peanut farm. Hi, y'all. I made it to a live finally. There you go. Paul Honeyman is in the house. Hello, Atasha Lynn. Hello. What is going on? What is going on? There's everybody. Everybody in the house. I love it. I love it. Uh, yeah, guys, busy day. I've been running around a little bit. Um, David Glantz, hello. What is going on? I, uh, I, I ran to go pick up some birds that were in the post office and they were going to be in the post office overnight until like tomorrow afternoon. And, um, they were stuck in Tupelo. So I went and picked them up and, uh, then I ran by my friend Jen's house. Cause I was like, well, I'm, I'm not going to be that far away coming back. So I thought, well, I'll pick up the, the crate for Buck, the goat that we borrowed to get Caroline and Ann with child and uh if they're not if they're not preggers by now they're not going to be but i think that they are and so uh ann's demeanor has been a little softer she's usually very kind of skittish um and only wants like affection if you have food but she's been like way affectionate and just kind of showing some of the signs so i think that she might be with child so time to get buck to hit the road so anyway, I stopped by there to pick up the the uh, the crate for him, and I picked up. Jen's got some chickens, some chicks in the brooder, so I took two of her chickens so that my turkey poults won't be stupid and try to kill themselves because I don't have any chickens right now. So I'm borrowing chicks to teach the turkey poults not to die. <laughs> so so there's that. Uh, Dana Mason, hello. How's everything going? It's going good. It's going good. I hope you guys are well. Ridge Life is in the house. What's up, Marco Torres? Hello, Lonely Hitchhiker Kent. Howdy, howdy, everyone. Hello, Beth Cornet. Hello. What is going on? Hey, howdy, howdy, howdy. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So I think I was going to try to take Buck back this evening on my way back into town, but Frankie had to do some tractor work grading the drive uh, in preparation for the uh, gravel and before the gravel, the uh, who's he, what's it's the, the word just went out of my head. Uh, textile fabric, something or other. Anyway, that stuff has to go down in a few areas. Anyway, so she was grading that and she fixed a pothole down at the end of the drive and that's been driving us nuts. And uh, so we didn't have time to load buck up and take him back to Jen. So I'm going to try to do it either tomorrow afternoon before I have to take her back to school or Friday. I got to take Tashka to the vet Friday um, earlier in the day for her uh, next round of shots and hopefully to schedule her for her uh, getting fixed. So we shall see. We shall see. Ridge Life is in his basement again. He's in there with his with his his leg recovering probably on some good pain meds and stuff. <laughs> probably enjoying the ride as it were. <laughs> uh, yes, Todd's adventures. We did make it through the storm. Uh, they went all around us, but did not hit us. We had some wind more so today. Honestly, we had a little, we had some rain yesterday, um, but it was really windy today, really windy today. Um, in fact, Mike didn't realize, I guess, how windy it was or was going to be. And I was gone during the worst part of the wind. So his plants got a little beat up that he had out on the, the back patio that he was kind of hardening off before he puts them in the ground. And they got hardened off today. <laughs> they got beat up by the wind a little bit, uh, unfortunately. So that was a little bit of a bummer, but uh, I think he tucked them back in for the, the rest of the afternoon once he realized it. But yeah, very windy here too, Ridge Life says. Yeah. And he's only got one leg to stand on, so he might just keel over. Uh, 
the bird above me looks like it's sitting on my head. It probably is. <laughs> my goose. <laughs> it is. It's just perched there perfectly. I know. I'm telling you. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit. I, I, I had kind of tweaked my back. Um, and it never, I, you know, I'm always doing something. My back is always messed up. And so I tweaked it, uh, a while ago and then it was better, but it wasn't a hundred percent. And then I was too aggressive about moving the chicken tractor and doing a few other things. And I, I literally felt like my back rib kind of like give out a little bit when I was pulling like the muscles around it. And uh, so now it's really mad. And right now it's at the stage where it feels like it's, it hurts and yet like it's gone to sleep. So it's got that weird tingly feeling going on. Like when your leg falls asleep, but it hurts, it feels like that. Um, and I can walk and it doesn't hurt. Like, you know, like it's not like I have to walk all like hunched over or anything, but like, I can't pull stuff right now. I can't lift is tricky and just generally uncomfortable. So it's just, and, and then, you know, we processed some birds the other day, which thank goodness Mike was able to get the plucker fixed. Spoiler, spoiler alert. Um, in the 11th hour, he was, he had, he had it all in pieces because he had taken it completely apart. And, uh, I said, you know, we're processing birds day after tomorrow, right? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to get it done. I'm going to get it done. And I was like, we were plucking those by hand. And then the morning of it was still in pieces. And I'm like, we're plucking these by hand. And he went in there and I don't know what he did, but he got it working and uh, fixed the plug and the thing. And it was all happy and back together. And I was able to use the plucker, which saved a ton of time because that's a big difference when you're plucking by hand versus when you're throwing the birds in the plucker. So. Yeah yay for that because because I uh Frankie was helping me some Mike helped for a little while but then he got pulled away and so ended up doing I think he I think he said I think he was I think I only eviscerated like four of them <laughs> anyway so I ended up doing the rest and Frankie was my gopher just grabbing me more birds and sticking them in the in the restraining cone for me and then I'd come by and do the deed and let it do its thing while I finish this bird and then I'd take that one and she'd put the next one and we just kind of had a little assembly line going and um Honestly, I've gotten pretty fast at doing the evisceration now because I've, I've I've done it a fair amount in my life now at this point. But um, I mean, it almost doesn't. You used to have Mike kind of do that part because I was like, well, he's faster at it, and he is. Well, I think on some of the larger birds, but the smaller birds, I think, are harder for him to do because his hands are so much bigger. But on the smaller birds, I can really get in there and whip everything out and do my thing. And it seems like it goes a little faster, I think. So I think it depends on the size of the bird. <laughs> if that makes sense. So, <laughs> but we got, we only did like 15. Um, so at least those are done and uh, made some more room out there and got some of the, you know, Cornish game hen size ones that were eight weeks, um, which technically that would have been at like the four week mark. So they're a little bit bigger than Cornish game hen. They're like, I call them personal pan chickens when they're that size, you know, they're, they're probably dressed out. They're probably only like, you know, two and a half pounds. So they're a little bit bigger than you know, your traditional Cornish game hens, like pound, pound and a half. Um, so they're a little bigger than that. They're kind of in the middle, but we'll do, we'll do some at 12 weeks. And then, you know, we'll do some at, uh, you know, the 16 week mark. And then the last batch, my goal is to have them all done by the middle of June because it's before it gets too hot. And we'll have those all away in winter camp before, you know, we have some of the family up here for, for uh, freedom weekend. Cause I would just be one less animal that I have to deal with and worry about or try to maneuver like, Oh, can't do them this weekend. Got to, you know, that way they're just done. So that's my, that's my thought process on that. <laughs> so Let's see. Uh, the plucker. No, that's right. The plucker does not use an F. That's right. <laughs> it's plucker with a P. That's right, Paul. That's right. Um, did, it, did it sound like I said something else? <laughs> I hope not. I, I swear I said plucker. I promise. Uh, Larry Parrish, hello. <laughs> 
I know. Well, it's not that I, I like, you know, I can read it from here. I did get upgraded prescription, so I can read it from there, but it's a little bit more of a struggly. So that's why I have it on my phone right now too. So I can kind of look down because leaning forward right now with my back is not super happy. So, you know, <laughs> knowing that it wasn't with an app. <laughs> it would have been, I told Mike, I was like, you know, I would have been real mad if I'd had to pluck all these birds by hand and you weren't here to help for the whole time. I would have been not happy, but you got the plucker done. So I'm not, I'm not too mad. <laughs> as long as the plucker was working, I was like, okay, that's, that's a game changer. You know, it really is like for any of y'all that ever done like more than just, I'm not talking like, oh, I'm calling a rooster or two. You know, I'm talking about we're fixing to do a bunch of them. Um, gosh, she's snoring so loud next to me. Um, Skylar's just passed out. But, um, you know, that plucker just makes a big difference in your time. And your your it saves your back. It just your hands get sore by the end of trying to pluck all those little tiny feathers. And it just, you know, when you go through to clean them up before you bag them, you got to really get all those little pin feathers out and really kind of, you know, you have to, you end up spending so much more time, whereas the plucker just whips that all out of them and you don't have to, you know, yeah, you still give them a once over and stuff, but you don't have to get in there with like tweezers and try to get any stubborn pin feathers out or anything like that. Cause that's a pain in the tuchus. Let me tell you, it's no bueno. Oh, Junk to Jim says, we have missed being able to be in your lives. Well, I'm glad you're here today, Junk to Jim. MT Homestead, Mike and Terry is in the house. What's going on? It's probably Terry, though. That's probably Terry. Do, do, do. Skylar did take Mike's place. I know. She's got her little head. She loves this girl. You guys can't see, but she's like on a pillow, like wedged herself on the pillow. She will find a pillow. She will move a pillow. She will lay on a pillow. That is her MO. She's really, she's funny like that. She cracks me up. So I know a bunch of y'all are, are planning on going to the 10 killer meetup. What is it? The 20 something, 26, 25th, 24th, 25th, 26th, 20 something, 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 something like that. Um, so I, I know I'm going to be seeing a lot of good videos and getting together from that. We will not be going to that one. Um, we are going to the one that one got announced at least to my knowledge, I didn't hear about that one until about a month ago. And so that was like, oh, not planned for. <laughs> so, but we are going to the one in Blue Mountain Lake in Arkansas in May. That one we planned and scheduled a while ago. So, which I'm excited too, because um, y'all know we've worked with high C boots in the past and stuff. And they actually, um, this last video that we did, uh, sponsorship video with them, I said, hey, can we get a pair of boots for like a viewer too? And they were like, yeah, 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 we can do that. So we're going to do uh, whatever raffle or whatever giveaway that they're doing um, at the meetup, we're going to do a pair of boots and then we'll be able to like turn in whatever the size and the style is to the gal and have it shipped directly to the person. So they won't leave that day with the boots, but I'll get their information and then I can send it to the gal and they can, they can, um, get that sent directly to them, which is pretty cool. So I was excited about that. I was excited about that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Nice. says Evelyn Newman. Yeah. So that'll be kind of a fun little little extra. I know that, you know, whenever they do the meetups and the raffles, they're always trying to get, you know, things to give away or get things donated. And so, um, you know, when you can have like a, a sponsor kick down something, that's always nice too. Peachy Peace. Deborah just got new high C boots. Nice. I bet she loves them. I love mine. Like, and I don't, you know, I don't get all excited about muck boots generally. Like, cause you, you know, in years past, I would have to get a new pair of muck boots every few months because they would just, you know, you buy those cheap ones at tractor supply or whatever, and they just fall apart and they're uncomfortable. The, the 
insole would always peel out and then you're just walking on the hard thing and like they would just fall apart and they're that weird rubber and they just they're awful and I admit these boots take a licking and they keep going and they're like I they're comfortable I, I dig them and they have some nice like cowboy boots too like they actually sent me a pair of like nice dress cowboy boots and I love those things so Gypsy Trails, $10 super chat. Howdy, Sid. What is going on? What is going on? Oh, what did I miss here? Yeah, the last meetup, they had a ton of stuff to raffle off. That's true. Oh, MT Home says, says, I forgot to email you back, but we will be there in June and are bringing a camper and a generator. Wanted to let you know I was thinking about it. <laughs> well, that's good. Run, Harrington's in here causing trouble. Look at that. Well, good. I figured you guys were coming. I hadn't gotten a whole lot of emails back from the family. Um, so I'm partially wondering if I got some of the emails wrong because some of them were very easy to find on people's channels and some of them were not because a lot of the people are people that I like either text or whatever. And so I'm like, I don't have their email though because we don't like email each other. So I had to go look up everybody's emails to like make my email list for the family family and um hopefully i got everybody's emails <laughs> right when i was transferring them over i think i did though because like a lot of them their little icons popped up once i put their email address in their icon would pop up so that tells me that i got at least those ones right <laughs> hopefully it didn't go to like their spam i don't know so <laughs> we'll see <laughs> we'll see but oh yeah I'm hoping, I know Mike said that he was hoping to get the gravel delivered this week. Um, you did answer right away, Auntie Anne. You get bonus points. And so did Tim. Tim answered right away. Um, and one other person answered right away. I just can't remember who it was right now. I think it was, I can't remember who it was now. I have to go back and look. My brain is so fried. <laughs> Are y'all doing the farmer's market this year? Yes. Mike will be doing the farmer's market again this year for his veggie tables. I will be doing uh, some baked goods, um, which I need to revamp a little bit. Like he had me kind of take a survey of like what people wanted locally for that. And um, surprisingly got a large response of people that wanted things that were gluten-free because they have like legit have celiac. And people wanted keto friendly desserts, which I have some keto friendly desserts that I've made in the past, but I don't know, like, I don't know if I feel like they would be going over well at a farmer's market, but I might do a little test run of a few things and see how they do and then go from there. But we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I'll probably do my lemon zucchini bread again because that was a hit. <clears throat> but I'm going to do smaller loaves because the loaves we did were too big. So I'm going to make, I got like smaller, like dessert loaves that I'm going to do. Um, and then I want to get some new, basically wrapping, like a new container situation to like put them in. So that's my, that's my game plan there. But yeah, that's the plan. Uh... Was the gravel price close to your guest price? Prices are outrageous here, says Neil. Yeah, so it was what I thought it was going to be, but I never said it out loud for them to do everything. Um, it was about double almost what Mike thought it was going to be. I don't know why I thought it was going to be the price I thought it was going to be. Um, for some reason, I just had that in my head that it was going to be like a million dollars or five grand. <laughs> and that was what the first like quote was. So, um, but that was with them doing like everything. So I don't know now, like, I think he's just going to get the gravel delivered, like from somebody. And then I think we're spreading it. Um, I think that's the game plan. Um, but he's been kind of working that out on his own. So, you know. Your zucchini bread is on point, says Ryan. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate you. 
Uh, I may have missed this, but how much did the contractor want to charge you to do your yard? Yeah. So it was like the, the price quote was like, I think it was like 5,200. And that was for like all the pie in the sky stuff that we had like talked about, like around the back, the whole area, like that whole thing. Um, and I don't know what the breakdown was of like, this was for labor. This was for the actual gravel. Like I never saw that part of it. I just know what the total was. Um, but I think that he's going a different route with just kind of doing some of it ourselves and getting like the materials delivered, I think. Um, if Mike is able to sneak out at some point from work, um, and come join us, then maybe he can, he can, uh, give you guys a little bit more details on that. <laughs> but but you guys, big spoiler is we figured out how the goat was escaping. So the other day when we were processing those birds, um, we kept looking up and the goat would be out. Dan would be out. <clears throat> and we kept putting him back in. And then we turned around and he'd be out again. And we were like, okay. So Mike set up, he moved the one security camera um, because it wasn't, he's like, it's not picking him up. He just all of a sudden keeps appearing. And I'm like, well, I don't think, maybe it's not tripping the motion sensor. Like, cause I was still like, I think he's going under the fence. You know, that was my, my hill. I was going to die on with that. I, I'm pretty sure he's going under the fence. I don't think he's going over. And if he's going under, he's not going to trip the motion sensor. So then Mike set the GoPro up on time-lapse still didn't catch him. He was just appearing on the other side of the fence. And so um, I see I'm, I'm over there processing. Mike had gone inside for something, or I think he was checking the footage actually during that time. He'd run inside to check the footage and I was outside and I see him like, I see Dan walking in the goat pasture, looking determined, walking towards the backside, towards the big open pasture where there's no fence or nothing. Right. And I'm like, so I like sneak up and Frankie was just coming back with more birds. And I was like, don't don't start yelling don't do anything like I'm just going to sneak up so I'm watching the top line of the fence and you know there's a little crest there so I couldn't see and then all of a sudden I nothing came over the top of the fence and I just see him like he just materialized on the other side of the fence and I'm like he's got to be going under I would have seen him climb over just now like I watched the whole fence line so long story short there was that side of the fence the T post um when they originally did the fence, I guess they didn't finish putting all the ties on the T-posts and then forgot about it. And so, and the T-posts were on the wrong side of the fence line because originally we thought that the livestock was going to be on the other side of that fence line, but then we moved that paddock and we'd already run that fence line. So then we like just kept it like that. So he was able to push it out um, because it wasn't tied. So the whole fence, the whole bottom just kind of lifted out essentially um and so frankie actually caught it on film which on friday's video you'll see that um he just kind of folded his little knuckles under put his head under and just scooted himself out like a little snake under there and popped out little goat ninja that's right auntie ann and uh so frankie went out there and fixed it um and I told Mike, I said, hey, you better go check because I don't feel like she was over there long enough to have fixed that entire fence line. And I was still processing birds. And I was like, I can't go investigate that right now. Like I've got, I've got like birds on the table here, you know? Um, and so he of course got out again because apparently he went and checked and he's like, yeah, she missed a whole section. So he just moved over one and was doing the same thing. So he fixed the fence the rest of the way, like the next day. And so now he has not gotten out, knock on wood, since. So there we go. So I got to say, I told you so. I was very happy about that, that I, I, cause I was like, I know he's not going over, but I mean, it was possible cause goats like, you know, goats do climb, but I just, you know, when you know your animals and like what they're prone to do, I just know how my, my, my goats are, you know, they're just like that. Uh, Gypsy Trails, uh, Jump to Jim's Homestead. My bad. I'm playing catch up and saw your vid today. Whoever's house that is, pretty nice. He's trying to trying to give you credit for somebody else's house, huh? <laughs> Southern Blessed Homestead. Hello. 
Big Country, hello. Jackie Boy, hiking with Jackie Boy, hello. Oh, uh, that's their tiny house they're working on for a friend. I know. Oops, what did I just do? I just did something bad. There we go. Um, anywho, but yeah. Um, but Treasure Hunter Neil says, I need to be beamed up. Don't we all, Scotty? Don't we all? Yeah. So at least that solved. Mike's excited now because that means he can start planting in the garden. Um, now that we've got that hole in the fence secured um, and happy. So now no more. No more. Dan doesn't have to get barbecued and everything is right with the world. So it's all good. Our Oki Homestead. Hello. Jump to Gem says they will be working on their own property soon, but they've been they've been busy helping their friends lately. Backroad Freedom, what's up? Hello, hello. No more prison breaks. That's right, Southern Blast. No more prison breaks. Yeah. So I'm I'm glad that he's contained. I don't like it. You know when your animals find a chink in the armor? Like I was having that problem with the birds. They were all getting out through the top of the roof. Now I got them all contained. Now I got the goats all contained. Everybody's contained. Although I did tell Mike there's a, a section of fence line along the between the the garden and the horse pasture that Beulah had decided there was some yummy stuff on the other side of the garden, like not the garden, but like just growing there that she wanted. And she actually bent because there's like there should have been another T post there. It's like a 12 foot run instead of a six foot run. And she kind of bent the top of the fence down, trying to reach some some little flowers and grasses that were growing right there. And uh, so I told Mike, I was like, you might want to stick another tea post over there and like address that before she decides to like just push it all the way down. <laughs> like if she's really determined to get a flower that's there or something. So might have to stick another tea post over there. The peanut farm. Is anyone else getting commercials? Is that something new YouTube is doing? Uh, yes, it is a newer thing that they started doing where they actually put ads in the lives too, um, which I know can be kind of annoying, but the way that they do it, if you, you'd have to go back and change it later. It's kind of a, I don't know, it's kind of a pain. So I know, but anyway, eh. the grass is always greener on the other side. That's right. Salty dog. I know, I'm telling you. Hey, just listening, doing electrical. I know, Jen, I, I was over at Jen's house today when I was picking up the crate, thinking I was going to be returning Buck to her today, but that didn't pan out. Um, they've got her, her whole house is ripped apart right now. They're doing a bunch of work. They're finishing out a room. They had to take the, they had like old, um, like wood paneling on the walls that she was not a fan of. Can't understand why. <laughs> And so they had ripped that down and they were, do, you know, redoing the, the drywall and everything. And then they've got the uh, HVAC guys there putting that system in. And so there's just sort of drywall dust and all their belongings are in the middle of kind of the kitchen living room area. And it's just sort of a stressful mess for her right now. So, you know, it's one of those things. Yeah, I know. Tim says, I don't use it while live. I turned it off beforehand. I know. But then I got to remember to turn it back on. And that that's the tricky part. <laughs> Everything in disarray should make Jen feel right at home, right? I, that's exactly right, Ryan. 100%. Oh, I'm telling you. I know. I mean, we've all been there. Like, Jen remembers when we were in our old place and we were redoing the or building the pantry, we moved everything out of the mudroom into the dining room. So we had these giant racks of things. Some of you may remember, because some of our videos were walking through the house, we were walking through these big racks in there and there was like a sheet up and there was drywall and it was like a whole thing. Um, Cause construction, you know? So it's always, it's temporary, but you know, yeah. it's, it's just getting through the temporary that can be a little bit unsettling. Uh, <laughs> Jen says, Sid, I remember it all. And it's just like what I'm living now. Yeah, 
It's not fun, but it will pass. <laughs> it's not fun, but it will pass. I know. It's it's no bueno. It's not a good time. I've you know it's I'm that's the one bad thing about when you're doing projects like that where you're really like gutting a room or you're knocking out a wall or you're doing you really are living in chaos. It's different from when you're kind of building something from scratch where it doesn't exist yet. So your stuff is still kind of in storage or you haven't decorated yet and you're still, you know, you're still building your house or your whatever the autonomous thing is. But when you're kind of doing it within where you are already living, it just creates so much chaos and dust and dirt and everything everywhere. And you can't remember where you left stuff. And it's just yeah, it's a whole thing. It's not fun. I don't envy you. Yeah. You guys did all that work on the house in California, then moved. I know. I know. Well, we always thought, like, when we bought that house, we thought the house in Ramona, that was, we always said, like, that's our forever home. Like, we loved that house. Um, it's, it's a gorgeous house. Like, we put a lot of work into it. We wanted to make it, we had even more plans for it. We just didn't get around to it. Um, but we did a lot to it. And it's one of those things where um, when the situation out there became just untenable anymore, we had to make a decision. And, and I hate to, to I, you know, I have a lot of wonderful memories in that house. I loved that house. It was a beautiful house. Um, but, but we have this, this whole yard and pasture lands and the ability to have all these things and and really be able to farm the way we want out here but it's it's hard to I can't concentrate with it he's got his door open in his office hold on let me just close his door I can't concentrate with him talking Sorry, guys. I cannot. When he's he's on the phone, he is so loud. He at least doesn't have it on speakerphone, but he left his door open. And so I'm like, I can still hear him. <laughs> it's very distracting to me. I know. I mean, he's in there still working, but, you know. His, yeah, his, his leg is still connected to him, Renzel. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And it's getting better, he says. Tim says the same. For those of you that don't know, Tim from Ridge Life had to get his knee operated on after jacking it up really bad. Um, and so he's recovering from his surgery that he just had. So, you know, yeah. So he seems to be on the mend. I know he says I like the property much better in MS, but you don't have a pool. I know that is the one, the one thing I do miss that pool. We we you know we had that pool completely redone. Um, I had my little flamingo tile in there, and like you know we had a lot of get-togethers there, and um, I really did love our little back patio area and how the doors opened up onto the patio. It was great for entertaining. Um, but that house is actually up for sale again. The people that bought it from us are are moving. <laughs> so, um, you know, did he hurt it on the bulldozer? <laughs> he might have, Ryan, he might have hurt his knee on that. I believe it was getting off of a, a four wheeler that that happened. Gypsy trails, $10 super chat serves Tim, right? Mr. Cool chasing around ginger. Oh boy. Yeah. It happens. Hey, everyone, I'm not ignoring you. I'm trying to fish, finish up an electrical outlet so I can hang drywall. She's the she's trying to do some of the projects that are getting done in the house herself. In fact, we were talking about it earlier. She's like, can I ask your opinion on some stuff? <laughs> she's like, should I texture the wall or should I leave it flat? And I was like, I like flat walls. And she's like, me too. And we we're talking about the ceiling and doing the, um, not wainscoting, what do you call it? Um, crown molding. and. Uh, all that good stuff. So she is, I'm sorry, Paul, she's not ignoring you. She's busy lady. And she's got a house full of workers. Well, they're probably gone now because it's like 630, but yeah. Yeah. 
a Spanish drag would look good. Is that some kind of uh, drywall finish? See, the, we, see, we don't like, women don't like textured walls because they're harder to keep them clean. So yeah, the workers are gone, she said. It's just, if you have like flat walls, it's just easier to like clean them. Like if something gets on them or, you know, it's just easier to clean them. If they're textured, it's like all the stuff, like I like we have popcorn ceilings in most of this house. That, well, that part's not, this is like a, whatever. I ideally would like to not have popcorn ceilings. That was the one nice thing about the old house in Ramona is we didn't have any popcorn ceilings. We did repaint a bunch of stuff and do a bunch of stuff. And, you know, some of the walls were textured, but some of them were smooth already. And we did the rest smooth that we did, but she wants to mop her walls. You know, she likes to keep them clean. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> Gypsy trails. Are you saying I should be a Spanish drag queen? <laughs> ah. Yeah, around here, all the houses have textured walls. I hate them as well, says Auntie Anne. Yeah, I think it's kind of like a, a sort of a dated thing. Like the textured walls, I think were real popular in like the 80s, the 90s, and maybe even into the early 2000s, like on the cusp. But the, the thing for the last while has been just flat, clean walls, no texture. And I just, I think it's a cleaner look, you know. Um, and it's easier to paint. Uh, it's just easier to keep it clean. It's just, it's just, there's just a lot of, lots of, lot of, like, see, flat, nice flat wall. I like that. Well, this wall we're going to knock out. Not right now. At some point down the road, Mike and I have already decided, like, some of the things that we're going to do. The one, our, our one complaint about this house is that um, everything is sort of segregated really weird when you come in the front door. Um, and so we kind of want to be able to open that up a little bit because literally even just with the three of us walking in the house together, sometimes it just feels like there's a choke point at the front door. Cause you're like, you kind of walk into the dining room. There's no real like entryway. So we kind of want to like, we're going to make the kitchen a little bit bigger at some point, knock this wall out. So this would be more open. Um, and we'll just have the beams for the support there. Um, so it won't feel quite so like closed off. But yeah, eventually we'll get to that point. <laughs> he fell off the four wheeler, even though he was sitting still, sitting still at the time. Uh, Paul says we won't pick on Tim too bad. We won't pick on him too. Popcorn is a way no go. Don't even buy the house if it has popcorn. I know. I know that was my one thing when I was here. I was like, oh, it's got popcorn, but that's a project for another day. Like when this wall, like when we get to the point where we've got everything built outside that needs built and things like, and that's kind of what we did with the old house too, is we built all the animal structures and we did all the stuff outside that we needed to do. And then we started and we had to add some fencing that we built like around the pool and between the farm side and the pool side and the garden side and all that. Once we kind of did all that, then we were like, okay, let's start picking on some of the projects on the insides. And then we started, you know, finishing out the mud room and, um, you know, expanding Frankie's room and, you know, finish the closet and doing all that stuff. Once we kind of, you know, get some of these things finished outside the way we want, then we can start chipping away at some of these things inside. Um, but I think this is going to be the first thing to go is this wall. So when that happens, it's like, that would be the time to pop the popcorn out, you know, and get it all off the ceiling. So, no, the chicken coop is not 100% finished. Um, Mike actually was going to kind of switch gears and finish it um, here more recently, but I actually told him to hold off because I have ducks that have made nests inside the coop right now. So, finishing the coop while they're trying to sit on nests is not ideal. Um, so I'm like, you know what, let's just wait. You've got your garden to keep you busy right now. There's other things we can work on. We're going to hold off on finishing the coop because what we are going to do, if you guys remember, we were going to do the, the other half of the coop that's still like wide open and unfinished. 
was going to be the feed room and brooder, which I was never really on board with the brooder being in there because I thought it was going to be too small. Um, and Mike and I kind of went back and forth on that. And he was like, no, the way I'm going to design it, it's going to work. And then he kind of realized that like, it wasn't going to do what he wanted it to do in the space he wanted it to do. So we've kind of scrapped that whole idea. Um, so we're going to compromise because I had wanted to expand the coop um, because I don't like the roosting racks are a nightmare. And he kind of just threw them in there to get them in there. So we had racks and they're terrible. So those are going to come out. We're going to take that wall out, expand it. So it's just going to be like a feed room closet on the other side and then that coop will be expanded and then we just have to add the door. So there's not like, there's, there's still some work that needs done obviously, but it's not so far away from being done, but doing that work would destroy the birds that are nesting right now. So I, I was like, I don't even want to, I don't even want to mess with that while they're sitting. I just, let me get my ducklings out of them and then we'll, then we'll worry about it. You know? <laughs> so that's the plan. Uh, when we had all of our public area wall redone, they told me they would do flat walls. I was like, huh? I had never heard of that. <laughs> Did Mike move the blue Ethernet cable in the hallway since he held off on outside projects? No, he did not. It's still taped on the floor. Um, he did fix the chicken pucker, though. Um, so that's good. One, one triumph at a time. He did, and he's working on the, the gravel situation out here. So I know he's got to get his plants in the ground in the next week or so. I know that's his goal. And I think get the gravel delivered this week at some point. And then um, we'll get that spread with Kenny. And um, that'll be some progress there. But yeah, we'll get the, we'll get that maybe, maybe this winter I can I felt like this winter, we didn't get some of the things done that I was like, let's do X, Y, and Z project while the weather's bad outside. But then we just sort of didn't, <laughs> like, I don't know what happened, but those things didn't get done. So I'm thinking maybe this winter, I'm going to be like, these are the things that we need to do while the weather's bad. And we can only work on inside projects. So I think, I think we'll make some more headway. So yeah, I need a way bigger coop. I know. So I think we're going to expand that a little bit. Still make it a feed room because he really wants to get my feed. As he says, I need your feed out of my shop. I'm like, my feed is literally taking up one pallet, but it's fine. Um, so I need to get that done um, and moved in there once that's finished. But until then, I'm not going to move everything because it's no point. Um, so I think once the birds are done for the season, then we'll finish attacking the coop like in the fall, maybe actually get that completely finished. Um, and then we can move on to some other things, but I'm still a little bit like nervous slash stressed because we did buy, you guys remember, I told you we bought the stand up freezer. Yes. The plucker lives. He did fix the plucker. Um, we bought that new stand up freezer because the chest freezer died and we need another stand up anyway. And praise. So we did that, but we were also at the same time looking for a larger refrigerator only. Um, and the reason we wanted that was so that for the farmer's market season, we're not having to juggle all that stuff in the house. Cause I was like, I cannot have another season where the entire dining room table and living room, not living room, but dining room kitchen area is completely taken over with your harvest. Like that is not going to fly for me again. Like that, that's like, you might as well throw, you know, sawdust up in the air for me. Like that was just making me crazy. Um, and it was just constant, constant. There was just dirt. You know, he'd bring the whole basket in from the garden and set it on the table. And there would just be, you know, garden dirt and stuff on the floor. And it was like impossible to keep it clean. And it was just, it was just too much for me. And I, so we had found one. But then we ended up not buying it. I don't remember why he didn't, he wasn't sure about it. And then it went back off the of sale and he didn't buy it. So I'm hoping that maybe like Memorial day weekend, when there's some more sales on stuff that maybe we can find a refrigerator 
them that meets the criteria that we can have for the majority of the season um, so that we don't have to worry about having it in the house. <laughs> so that's my hope. That's my hope. Yeah, that sounds about right, Ryan. If you're talking about the gravel, I think it was about 550 a load. I, I do remember him saying something like that. But, or maybe that was for something else. I don't know. But anyway, um, I know, but he, 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 he wants an even bigger one, Jen. So the one he's looking at is actually 40 cubic feet. And it was like, no, not 40 cubic feet. What was it? I'm lying. It was like 42 inches or 46 inches across. That's what it was. The freezer was 20 cubic feet. Yeah. Anyway, and it's got like these double doors. It's more of a commercial grade one. And I found one that we liked, but I forget why we didn't pull the trigger on it. There was something that wasn't right about it. It either wasn't quite big enough. I don't know. But then that sales, those sales were over. So we ended up not getting it. But we'll, <clears throat> we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. So I think that's the game plan, though, is to hopefully still get one of those before it's all said and done. Um, and then have that like that so uh big country sitter you're also going to build a pantry room like you did in the other house yes we are we're actually going to build it um in the garage and um part of that will be its own separate pantry um because we don't park our cars in there anyway so i mean right now i'm brooding birds in there so Jen is canceled. Why is Jen canceled? <laughs> oh, yeah, the freezer. Your freezer. That's right. Um, so, yeah, definitely that will be one of the projects. That'll probably be, honestly, the first, like, build project that's technically inside the house. Um, outside of the electrical that's going to get run to the shop. Because once that's done, um, because all that stuff, like the extra freezers and the um, that refrigerator are going to go in the shop on that breaker um, on the new panel. So um, that'll be all separate because that's all going to be used for like really that refrigerator is only going to be used during farmer's market season. So basically just during the summer, spring and summer. And so. Um, that is going to be all farm stuff in there. Um, anything that's, you know, the freezer we use to freeze the chickens and things like that, that's all going to go in there. Um, and then the next thing I would say would be building the pantry <clears throat> in the garage. And then Mike wants to, once he's got electric out there, I think he's going to build an office out there for himself um, and potentially move this office out there. Um, and then potentially be able to then expand Frankie's bedroom and make her her room potentially that whole room, which would mean we wouldn't have, not that we have a guest room now, but then we really wouldn't have one. Um, so, because initially the idea was we would, I don't know, he was talking about like maybe making this part of the dining room, like his office and expanding that way. But there is a door between Frankie's room and Mike's office. So there's nothing saying that she couldn't use that extra space in the meantime. Um, I mean, it's not really totally connected. There's a, she has to go out and in from the other hallway. But I mean, if we, there's some things we want to do that we can utilize that space better. Because there's kind of like a lot of dead space. There's a big hallway right behind me and then a weird little hallway in the back there that goes to nowhere. Basically, it goes to his back side of his office that comes out here. Because that, that was the original family room in the house. So that's where the fireplace was in the house. So we're going to do some revamping and changing around eventually. But again, that's something that's like down the road. So, and you know, Frankie's, she's 14 now. 
you know, who knows how much longer she'll be here. We may not get around to that project by the time she's like, deuces, folks. Um, <laughs> which is weird to say because, you know, but what are you going to do? I just realized that with Ryan in here, I know Beth texted me earlier. Oh, that's what she, that's what she texted me. She said, I'm trying this next. And she, and it said she sent me a picture. If it's something she's going to make for dinner, some kind of chicken dish that I'm sure Ryan will be eating. I'm not complaining because it'll be wonderful. Mike needs a walk-in cooler to hang the deer in. Um, that's kind of the idea behind the sizer refrigerator that he wants to get because he would be able to use it for that too. Um, so, but he's also kicked around the idea of making like a cold room. So I'm not sure where he is with that right now um with that whole concept we'll see i guess as time goes on and things shake out but we're just kind of there's you know it's one of those things where we had checked off so many things off our list at the old house that we knew um like we knew that we wanted to get done but and then we only had like a few more things that we wanted to do that were like bigger projects here we're, it's like starting over again. So it's like, we got to start with all the animal structures. Okay. We've chipped away at some of those still have more to do. Still want to build the barn with the tiny house, still have some things that we need to work out, you know, um, still haven't started the sheep. That's a whole nother thing. I, I thought we would maybe have them started by now, but there's a few other things that we have to do fencing wise and problem solve water and whatever wise that we're going to have to figure that out a little bit. Um, but I know Jen was just texting me too. So I have to see, I don't know if it's something pertinent. She's sending me, oh, she sent pictures. She just did some electrical work. Good job. I'll show you guys. She's got, oh, I'll have to lean forward. She just did her little electrical work there. She's, wiring all her stuff and not blowing anything up that's good good job and will will probably be like oh, when he gets home <laughs> i know now we have to redo it all again i know but that's okay it gives us something to do it gives us something to do you know so and there you know some of them are going to be more intense projects than others but well, you know, it's good to show. Oh, there's the other side. Let's see if I can make it bigger. She's in there cutting in outlets left and right. Look at her go. But yeah, so we made a closed trailer with insulated panels with a window kicker to cool it. We have gotten it down to three degrees. I bet it's 30 degrees. The little heart is covering it up, so I can't. Oh, there we go. 35 degrees. There we go. Um, yeah, um, those little cool bots that'll trick your air conditioner and make the room colder. Uh, I know that's what he's been talking about wanting to do. Um, she's texting you, but ignoring me seems right, says Ryan. Yeah, sounds about right. <laughs> The country says, I see a visit from the fire department in the near future, Jen. <laughs> a walking cooler for renegade goats. Renegade goats have been solved. <laughs> they are they are no longer escaping, so we're good. We are good. Oh, good night. Gypsy Trails is on and off. Stay safe, Randall. Thank you for the super chats. Appreciate you. Yeah. So yeah, I think uh, I think it's going to be, you know, kind of just chipping away at different projects as we have time and as we get things kind of settled. And, you know, there was a lot of adjustments just kind of getting situated and figuring out where everything was and, you know, not as much of an adjustment as I thought it would be, of course, but still some adjustment, you know, so we still kind of settled in now and now we're just trying to kind of knock out those projects and get some things done um 
there's a couple more projects that I want to do that'll be kind of minor projects. In the meantime, um, that hopefully we'll be able to get to um, before too much longer. I think once we get this gravel situation kind of done, uh, then we'll, that'll free up a little bit to work on a couple of those little things that I want to get done. Um, and like most of those projects are like, you know, half day projects. They're, they're not like anything crazy. Um, so I think that, you know, I think we can, I think we can do it. I think we can do it. Much more fun to harass him. Oh, you should swap times with SLR so we can <laughs> see Mike on the lives. I know it's funny because like it, it, it never fails. Like he'll be off at a normal time, like Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. But for whatever reason, a lot of times on Wednesdays, he ends up like stuff ends up happening at work and he gets stuck in there and then you don't get to see him. I know he's like my snuffleupagus. Like he doesn't always exist. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> Paul says he'd find an excuse to him. I know. Maybe. Maybe you would. Justin Rose had a cold built cold room built also. So the land built a cold room on a portable trailer. Both using cool bots. Yeah. Cool bots is like the, the way to go to do it. Um you know, the idea of the, the trailer would be cool. Uh, we're not quite there yet. I, I still want to get like uh, an animal trailer before too much longer. Um, because as I keep reminding Mike, I'm like, well, I, how, how do you propose we get the sheep here when we buy the sheep? <laughs> like I have friends that have trailers. Brian's got a trailer. Jen's got a trailer. I can borrow their trailers pretty much anytime I need to. But, you know, it would be nice to not have to drive 20 minutes to go get the trailer and then do that. But, you know, and then what if they need the trailer, you know? So, I don't know. Ryan says he's thinking about a root cellar in the near future. Yeah, I don't know. Like, you have to be careful out here with some of that because of the water table situation, I guess. But um, I've seen a lot of people do the root cellar as well. They, they will bury their, uh, they'll get like a cargo container and bury it and build it in that, which is kind of cool. And I mean, it would also double as a storm shelter in a pinch too, of course. So that would be, yes, four minute warning. I know it. Look at that. She's just popping her little, popping her little uh, sockets in there. Working away while we're while we're over here just chit chatting. Now on the floor scraping, she says. <laughs> I was always told you have to borrow something more than twice. It's time to get your own. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I get you. I get you. I mean, I know they don't mind, but um, yeah, you're thinking of a twenty foot container. Yeah, yeah, that's a cool way to do it, for sure. Um, like I said, I know they wouldn't mind if I need to borrow it again because they've. They've each borrowed Kenny several times, you know, for different stuff or whatever. But um, so it wouldn't be like the end of the world. But I'm like, yeah, we should have our own our own trailer at some point. So that's on my that's on my wish list. I keep an eye out for when I see a good one. Like I keep looking, you know, one that's a good price, not too expensive, but still in decent shape. Doesn't need to be gutted, you know. So I'm keeping my eyes open for it. Keeping my eyes open for it because I do need I need I do need a you know essentially a horse trailer because I could put sheep in that I could put goats in it I could put a horse in it I could put you know anybody who needs to go in it I could put it so that's 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 the thing you know that's true I have barges more than twice well one of the moving out here I don't know does that count the getting out here part. <laughs> that was that was definitely the main borrow with getting out here and then we had it for a while out here <laughs> I know I do I know where it's parked she wouldn't be surprised if she came home one day and it was gone and I just said hey I needed the trailer today I hope you don't mind I swung by and grabbed it <laughs> she'd be like I'm proud of you for hooking it up yourself <laughs> without having a spotter 
<laughs> or the fancy truck that does it for you. <laughs> well, anyway, guys, it is that time of the evening where we call it a night. Um, thank you all so much for hanging out with us or me. Me and snores a lot over here. Um, we appreciate you guys. Um, yay for Jen's electrical skills. And uh, thanks for hanging out. And uh, make sure you check out Friday's video because you will get to see Dan's big escape caught on film uh, and uh, our chicken processing adventures as well. So I hope you all have a blessed rest of your night. And as always, guys, safety's off. Jen, I'm going to go meet your mom at the church so I can get my baggie. <laughs> Bye.